Okay. So um, after coming back from uh, the ITS, um, ITS lab and seeing all the different research that is going on, and a lot of this research is practical, a lot of it is funded by um, government agencies, and it immediately gets implemented. So one of the things that was mentioned was the, uh, the truck-only uh, lanes on, on the 401. Uh, one of the other things uh, was that was mentioned were um, uh, was the uh, was Marlin, so multi-agent reinforcement learning uh, that was used for the traffic lights, and that is um, there's a pilot project um, one hour away from here, uh, out west in a, in, in the Burlington area, uh, using using that technology uh, and replacing a, basically the control of a traffic light. And if that works, hopefully later on it will be a, in several um, bigger cities uh, using the traffic lights that basically learn what is happening around them and optimizing based on that. So now we're going to learn some of the techniques that are used uh, to do that modeling and that analysis. Um, and also a bit more about uh, traffic assignment and routing and how, how those services work. Okay, so first of all, uh, you, we're seeing all those uh, networks with cars moving in them. The way you start with modeling those uh, includes two things. So one is the traffic flow, flow model, so how do vehicles move. Um, so that would include the aggressiveness of vehicles, um, how basically how often uh, and how they change um, lanes, uh, how familiar they are with roads, um, the and their speeds and and all those those um, mobility patterns. The other is the network uh, or routing model. So the actual roads and definitions. So all of those traffic simulators um, are designed intersection by intersection, road by road. Takes a lot of time to have um, to have a um, those systems and maintain them, especially for the large systems. So we're talking about systems such as the GTA where five and a half million people live, we have millions of cars. So having those um, uh, is very um, and in a very accurate way is a challenging task. So a network is defined as nodes and links. Um, nodes being intersections, uh, intersections of roads or intersections of highways, let's say. So the, let's say the intersection of the 401 and the 404, two highways, would be a node, while a link would be a section of, let's say, the 401. Um, and whenever you have a lane change, so a, a lane change, um, I mean a change in a number of lanes, so if it changes from four to three, then you, those, are, those would be defined as separate uh, links. So this is how you model, basically, um, transportation networks into, an, into co com um, computer systems. So uh, there are several uh, s s types of software. One of them that was mentioned there is called Paramix. That's a commercial software that was used um, by the Deep students last year. Um, that one def um, represents uh, things uh, as vehicle by vehicle. It's micro agent, it means uh, vehicle by, by vehicle. It's micro simulation. Uh, the issues with that is if you have a large network with more than half a million cars, for example, um, it doesn't do well. It, uh, it blows up. Because everything, is, um, everything has to run on one core. And uh, on one core, the simulation time becomes like pretty big. So you can't represent uh, large networks. And you can't represent large number of vehicles. Uh, one of the other ones that was mentioned was uh, MatSim. Uh, MatSim does things in terms of activities. So people are defined in terms of uh, where they live, uh, what activity they, they do. So they go, they, uh, their activities are defined, let's say, by going to work, working from here to, from this time to this time, going to the mall, going and getting groceries, coming home, going out, and things like that. Um, so it's good in that type of um, simulation, basically. And the other one that was mentioned is uh, Dynasty. That's um, open source. Um, that is good in re representing things at a massive scale, uh, but it's not good in representing every vehicle by itself. 
so I use both. I'm now focusing on Dynasty because my problem is, uh, is big. Um, so the routing problem is which uh, links should I choose? Which route should I choose? Um, so a route is defined by consecutive number of links. Uh, and based on which criteria. So what is, what is what I'm trying to achieve? One of the things that Kasra was mentioning is sometimes it's not always about um, being there the soonest. In some cases, I'm more imp it's more important for me to, be, to have a reliable route. I'm okay with being a few minutes late as long as I arrive before a certain time. So, um, and there are different um, optimal decisions, and we're gonna solve problems for, for routing in a bit. So as we said, network modeling, um, uh, how, how you define the network, so links and intersections, and you try to assign the traffic on that. So you have a demand. Your demand is a number of vehicles that want to go from point A to point B, uh, how, and from all the different nodes, basically there are, there are sets of demands that you know about depending on where people live and where people work, and based on measurements that we make. Now, you take this problem and you want to see how you, you give them routes. If you know the information of everyone, and where they want to go, where their destinations are, how do you assign them on through this resource, which is uh, the road? Okay, so this is how a physical network is defined. Of course, the links have to be going in two different directions. Um, that would be the, the representation. And you have two different types of um, routing mechanisms. They are, let's see, these are coming in a bit. One is called user optimality or equilibrium, and the other one is system optimality. So user, this is the perspective from a user's perspective. Uh, so so this, this is the user perspective, so the selfish perspective. So every user trying to make, to get the shortest route. And system optimal is what is best for the whole system. Um, and in terms of the method of uh, solving them, you have uh, static, which is the co conventional network analysis, and dynamic is a bit more, uh, uh, more difficult, but it's more accurate, uh, so that when dynamic changes happen in the, uh, in the simulation, uh, that is also taken into account within your calculation. So uh, let's see. And you have also fixed routing, so those are um, uh, those are more uh, s simpler than, than these ones. Okay, so some of the, some of the math that basically defines why we're, why we're doing this. So um, you have demand, so the desired level of usage. Uh, demand is how many vehicles want to use a particular uh, road or link, right? So in terms of cost, the lower the cost, the higher the demand. So if it's going to take me two hours to go to the mall on a Saturday afternoon, then I would be like, forget about it. I'm not gonna go. I'll go at a different time, right? So less people, um, less people will be willing uh, to do that. The cost here is time, okay? Um, and as we know, as we increase the volume, um, let's see. As, is this correct? Oh no, as the cost increases, the volume, the volume decreases. Um, so less people are willing, are willing to take that route. As the cost decreases, so it, it takes less time to go to a destination, more people will be willing to take that route, okay? Now the supply is the infrastructure, so most of the time in transportation systems that's, that's pretty limited, unless of course, as was su suggested by one of your colleagues, you change the direction of uh, the road. So in the morning, let's say you, uh, that road is only used to go uh, south to the downtown area, and then in the afternoon, you change it to go north so that people are leaving work go out of the downtown area. So unless, you, if you don't have things like that, usually the supply is, is uh, limited. And in terms of performance, as you increase the volume, uh, this is the travel time. So the travel time or the travel cost goes up, 
okay? So if the volume is zero, the travel time, um, the travel time is constant, right? So if, the, if there are no people on the road, I know that this particular section of the highway takes me five minutes, okay? Uh, so if you go to the CP24 website, the lowest number that you would find for a route, that's, um, that's your free flow of travel time. Free flow meaning there are almost no vehicles on the road. As more vehicles start joining the road, what's going to happen is your density is going to de increase, and then your speeds are going to decrease, as we mentioned there, okay? So at the, on the density speed curve. And then based due to that, your travel time is going to increase. So this is called a volume delay function or volume travel time function uh, or link performance function. So the travel cost or travel time goes up. Now, um, we're going to discuss these two, uh, these two equilibriums and, and then solve them, understand how they work. Um, because they're the most common and how, uh, they define how, uh, what happens in, in real life. So we have this, we have a set, um, set capacity, we have a particular highway, and then all of a sudden um, people go and say we need a new route here and uh, I don't know, some politician gets excited because there's elections coming and then they find the money somehow to build a new road, okay? So new freeway, low cost, right? So you have, you have two functions. You have, first of all, we're talking about the demand function. So this is going down. I hope everyone can see it. It's going like down like this, okay? Going down like this. So the lower the cost, the higher the demand would be, okay? More people are willing to use a road if it's uh, if it takes them less time. Now, the, uh, uh, the opposite graph is the performance function. So the, the more people are, on the, uh, are using the road, the performance in terms of travel cost is gonna go up. And in economics, when you have a demand and supply curve basically, their intersection is what provides, um, their intersection is what provides you the equilibrium point. So at the beginning, when we, when we have a demand, our intersection was somewhere around here. Um, when I, uh, let's see, when, when there's a new freeway, okay, so we were at point one. When there's a new freeway, uh, the cost goes down. If the co cost goes down, everybody knows about it and starts wanting to use it. So it goes here, okay? So, for example, when they did the 407, at the beginning it was almost empty. Of course, there's a toll on it, but lots of uh, more people wanted uh, to use it. So it goes to here. Now, when it goes to point two, all of a sudden it starts getting congested, right? Because there, there are more people using it. When it gets con congested, you go to point three. So all of a sudden your performance function that, uh, is um, your performance is getting worse, your travel time is increasing because now you have more people using it. You have more people using it, then um, it gets congested. Some, some people decide that we're not gonna use it, it's not worth it, they give up, then you go back to here, then it gets better, you go back to here, then people know again, you go back here, so end up in this point which is the uh, equilibrium, okay? So one of the interesting notions about this is when we have a, um, a new highway built, that perceived solution is not a full solution because when you do provide that additional capacity, more people are going to use it, so you're not going to end up with the same demand. The original demand that you have, that, that you used to have, is going to increase, so the benefit that you, you were going to attain is actually less. You're not going to have this benefit um, in terms of m more volume. You're only going to have up to here because uh, the whole demand also changes, okay? Um, it's similar case in, um, in different uh, economic concepts where the whole demand changes when you reduce the, the price uh, drastically. Okay, now, Let's see, I'm, I'm going to explain a few of these um, 
um, assignment models, and then uh, I'm going to give you time to, to solve them. Okay? So we mentioned we mentioned there was uh, two different types of uh, um, traffic assignment. One of them is called um, user equilibrium. This is where users by themselves act uh, as their own selfish agents, and they kind of um, play a game together. So game theory acts in a similar way. Uh, so the selfish agents, they play a game, and then they end up at a, uh, at a particular um, equilibrium. So you're assuming fixed demand, that the demand is not changing within the, this interval. Um, so mul you have uh, OD as origin destination. So you have multiple ways that you can go from the same, uh, uh, across the same origin destination pair, so OD pair. And we're assuming that users are rational, okay? So in game theory, this is also um, assumed. This implies that um, users will be, when they see congestion, they will change their route and go into another route which has a shorter uh, travel time, okay? Now, some of the major assumptions, motorists are rational, which isn't usually the case, which isn't always the case. Uh, demand is constant, but we know that uh, usually it varies within the day and day to day, um, and it also varies with cost. So as cost changes, the, the demand also changes. And the other thing is that supply is constant, so we're assuming that there are no accidents or incidents that are gonna happen that are, that are going to reduce the uh, congestion. And that also, another thing that, that we're assuming is that everyone knows these available alternate routes. And as you know, as you see in Toronto, for example, with lots of tourists now, not everyone knows where they're going. Um, so those play a, dif a difference. The percentage of familiar versus unfamiliar um, and drivers makes a difference on the transportation system. Okay, so assume you have uh, you want to go from here to here. This is the demand that's coming in in D. And you want to divide the vehicles onto these two routes. Okay? We want to find out how many vehicles to put here and how many vehicles to put here. Okay? Um, and what happens with a user equilibrium, and the principle is called wardrobe principle, um, is after these vehicles arrange themselves, um, what will happen is the travel times of all of, uh, of all the different routes, here it's two, but it could be a, as many as you want, uh, they will be equal. So they will arrange themselves in a way that any route that they take will take the same, uh, the same travel time. The reason for that is if one of the, uh, travel one of the routes takes a smaller, make, uh, ha is closer or uh, has a smaller travel time, then because the users are rational, they will switch from a longer one into that one, okay? So end up in this equilibrium um, where basically you have these two different uh, links or two different routes with these two different performance functions that we were showing earlier. And they will keep on changing between these two until they end up at this intersection where the tra travel time of both routes is the same. Now. Uh, so this is the travel, um, we're basically using this, okay? We're basically using this link performance function, but two different routes are gonna have uh, different looking uh, link performance functions, starting with different free flow time and maybe a different slope. Okay, um, so at this point, after getting this equilibrium, no one can improve their time by switching their routes because all the routes have the same travel time. Now. That's in terms of user equilibrium. In terms of system optimal, this is how, this is what's best for the whole system. Um, in here, what you want to do, what your goal is, is to minimize the total travel time for the whole network. In this case, each user was trying to tr minimize their own travel time. So they would uh, uh, have two choices. The one which is shorter, they would go to it. If they find a shorter one, they would go to it, ending up with all the links having the same travel time. In this case, you end up with 
Um, so this is the system. You can think of it as everyone providing their, uh, their destination request to, the, to a system, and the system is solving this optimization. And then they go back and say, you take this route, you take this route, because this way is the best for the system. So the goal here is to minimize the total travel time for the network. And um, so this is not equilibrium from the other sense. And what, uh, what ends up happening here is um, you have these two curves, similar to before, but instead of doing an, uh, having an intersection between them, the, instead of having their own travel times being equal, what you will have is the marginal cost, which is the tangent of this curve, being equal on both. If, if you're not familiar with this, I can explain it to you uh, in a bit. Um, so the reason for that is, um, because I care about the total travel time, I'm willing to send some uh, vehicles on a route which is longer, as long as that benefits the total travel time and reduces it. If I send everyone on the shorter route, right, everyone's going to suffer together and the other route is going to be empty. So some people do need to go to the longer route for the good of the society. That's why this is system optimal is, is uh, best for everyone. Remember that if you do this over time and then uh, next time you send these vehicles to the longer one and the shorter one, it averages out and it becomes the best for everyone. But it's hard to implement this to, for people because they don't perceive the uh, long-term benefits. They look at the uh, short-term selfish benefits, basically. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the math uh, proving basically the slope and what it means. Um, let's see. So because I care about the minimizing total travel time, the I want to minimize this, this marginal cost. The marginal cost defines uh, the amount of time that it would take um, every additional vehicle that I put on that link. So every additional vehicle I put on that link, the cost of all the vehicles on that link is going to be that cost. Uh, and I, what I want to do is, for both of the links, I minimize that, I make them equal to each other, uh, so that the total travel time is minimized. So there are several ways of solving uh, for these. There's an iterative way and an exact way, and there are software that solve this. And what you're going to do now is you're going to solve this by hand. It's pretty simple. Um, mathematic equations. So this is the problem that you have. Let me go to the back to read for all of you. Please take out your notebooks. So the problem is you have, you have 2,500 vehicles per hour. Remember, this is demand. That's why it's per hour. That's the demand coming in here. You have an on-ramp here. The on-ramp is 1,000 vehicles per hour. And you're going to be doing this individually. So you have 1,000 vehicles per hour. That's, that's the on-ramp. And all of them are going here. And you need to find what Q1 and Q2 is. So how many vehicles are going through the upper route? And how many vehicles are going through the lower route? OK? Now, uh, so an eastbound urban corridor is composed of a freeway splitting into two freeways running in parallel, as shown. The performance of the first freeway, so this is the upper one. OK, T1 is for Q1, is 4 plus 3 Q1 over C1, where C1 is the fr freeway capacity of 2,000 vehicles per hour. And T1 is the travel cost uh, in minutes. This should be an N. And Q1 is the volume using the freeway. OK, so you're trying to find what Q1 is. Uh, the second freeway has a performance function given by T2 equals 6 plus 2 Q2 over C2, where C2 is the capacity. So for the first one, C1 is given, OK? For the second one, C2 is not given, but instead of that, uh, you have uh, another given, which is the flow on the second freeway can, can be described by the Greenfield relationship of the form u equal 100 minus 0 0.625k. So I'll give you the formula for that, which is what we learned in the morning. 